Welcome back guys. So as I said in the previous video, in this video, we're going to discuss how you can train the models, these custom models with your own data. But before we do, I do want to uh, say one thing. So if we go to the um, base models, you can look at all the models that we've looked at. And for example, um, many of these Amazon models are in preview, so they're not available in the playground yet. Um, and I do want to talk about, for example, the uh, embedding model because the Titan Text G1 or the Titan uh, Text G1 Lite are similar to like other uh, AI models um, that we've looked at with like uh, Anthropic AI or A21 Labs. However, this one uh, is an embedding model. And remember, um, embedding models create a vector output. So this one outputs a vector of size 1536. And this means that you can have like a text and it's going to save it as this embedding and then you can use this uh, embedding to then you know save your data into a vector database and then do semantic search with it and all those kinds of stuff and the reason that these embedding models are not in the playground is because there really isn't an output besides a vector with this size okay so amazon was like you know if if you do a playground with these chats or image text it's pretty cool when you see the output but for that model, the output is just a vector. So it's just a vector with um, um, 1,536 uh, numbers in it. So it's not really anything that, you know, you need a playground for. So now let's come back over here to custom models. And here you can fine tune and incre incrementally train a base model with your own data. Right now, this is in um, preview actually also. So you can't use it, but I will show you guys how you can. Okay, so if you go to fine tune a model, you can see over here, as of the recording, um, there are no models that I can fine tune just yet, okay? So if you're watching this video in a few weeks or months, uh, you'll have the source model. But for me, this is so new that I can't select the model. But then let's let's suppose I selected a model here. Then I can, you know, say my name, my, my custom LLM. Um, you can do model encryption. And if you look at the information, our data is encrypted by default with a key that AWS owns and manages for you. And to choose a different key or your own key, um, you can um, basically just uh, set this model encryption and you can select your own key, okay? Now you can have a job name that you want. So this way you can identify the, uh, the training job for this um, specific model. If you want to, you can even set it up to be in a VPC. And here is the input data location and the validation data set. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. And here are the hyperparameters that you can tune. Um, epochs, batch size, learning rate, and learning rate um, warm-up steps. You know, I'm not going to get into the details because I'm assuming you guys already know what these are. As you can see, the information is pretty um, good here. Um, so yeah, I'm not really going to get into the details. Um, and here you can get in the output data. Um, where the model is going to be output. And here you can also have service access and you know just some basic what role you want to assume, okay? So here it says that purchase provision throughput to use a fine-tune model. Remember, this is what we talked about. If you fine-tune a model, you're gonna have to do provision throughput and it's going to be billed by the hour. Um, and if we come back over here to the provision throughput, you can look at it right now, what's available, what's not available. You can just come here to the docs and look at the latest um, about provision throughput. And remember, when we looked at the pricing, for example, for the um, provision throughput, so um, let's look at it actually, sorry. Um, let's look at it, for, for example, for Anthropic. Um, for the provision throughput, um, you must have a commitment, for example, for the Anthropic AI, for either a one month or a six months. And this is the per hour billing, okay? So that's why they're gonna be quite uh, expensive because you have to do it um, either for a one month commitment or a six months commitment. And so before you do train your custom model and then you wanna deploy it, I highly recommend you look at the pricing because it can get quite costly. Um, so I just wanted to, to let you guys know. So do look into it and Actually, yeah, the epochs, you know, I, I don't want anyone who doesn't um, have this understanding to think that, you know, 
I'm not going to talk about it. So epochs basically is just the number of iterations of all the training data. So the more epochs you have, the better your model is going to be, but the more expensive the training um, is going to be. So this is basically how many times it should loop over your entire uh, data set. The batch size is the number of samples processed before the model weights are updated. If you set the batch size to one, then the model is going to be very noisy because after each sample, it's going to you know, go into a direction when it's being optimized with a gradient descent. So you do not want to set too large of a batch size because if it's too large, then you could have you could run out of memory. So you know you want to look at the uh, optimal number, and there are a lot of articles of how you should choose the batch size for LLMs. The learning rate is the step size for incrementing parameters at each iteration. So this is basically for backpropagation. If the learning rate is too small, then your uh, model might not converge to the uh, ideal solution. If the learning rate is too big, then it might uh, jump over the optimal uh, solution. So you have to find the optimal learning rate. And this is just the number of iterations over which the learning rate is gradually increased to the initial rate specified. So basically, you might want to set this to like, I don't know, like 10, 50, depending on a use case. Um, and basically, it's going to say that after how many iterations should the learning rate um, be increased to this because it's gradually increased to the initial rate specified uh, over here. So you can play around with this as well. Uh, this is so that this is a great parameter if if um, you want to optimize the performance, uh, not the performance, but the uh, number of minutes or hours it takes um, for your model to uh, train. And here, this is important because I do want to let you guys know that if you do want to train your uh, a custom model with your own data than how that data should look like. So I'm over here in the official guides over here, bedrock um, user guide for the model customization. And here you have the prepare the data sets. This is how it should look like. So this is how your data should look like. You have the input and the expected output that your model should say. So, you know, if you're, uh, for example, a, a hospital and you want to train this or you're a research team and you want to use this for medical stuff, you can have like the input be like the patient's concern. So they're going to be like, I have a sore throat, um, I have a running nose and I have a high fever. And then the expected output is going to be, you know, a, a certain sickness or whatever, a disease. It could be COVID, I don't know, whatever, or a flu. And so that's how you could optimize this, okay? And so this is an example. The input is what is AWS and the output is it's Amazon Web Services. So this is how your training data should look like. And you can read more about this. It should um, support the JSON format. And you need to have these keywords, the input and the uh, expected um, output is going to be specified over here. So as you can see, um, then I can start fine tuning the model. OK, but like I said, there's no source model as of now because Bedrock is so new. But by the time you're um, looking at this video, there might be a source model that you can look at. And like I said, be careful with the pricing if you do uh, tune your own model, because in order to use it, you have to do provision throughput, which is quite costly and it could be several thousand dollars a month. OK, so you've been warned. Um, but I did want to show you guys how you want to do it. And this is going to be probably be used by big, large companies and, you know, like uh, large banks who have the money to to support this. OK, so this is basically my overview of Amazon uh, Bedrock. Um, I feel like we've touched on all the topics. So in the next videos, we're going to start looking at um, our projects and what we're going to be building. So I will see you in the next video.